Hi, sorry, I was um, backstage playing some games. I don't know if uh, any of you have kids. I'm probably the youngest one in the room. But I have kids, and all they do is play these games incessantly. And there's a uh, kind of a big thing going on in the internet world, which is now moms playing. Because despite what everyone thinks or may not think, teenage boys and my girls are hardcore gamers. And many moms are playing even harder than these kids. In fact, moms may be the biggest community of gamers out there. But don't take it from here. From me, here are three moms to tell you all about it. And moms out there, make sure to let us know your favorite game by tweeting with the hashtag NewFront. We want to hear all about those games. There's no manual that tells you how to be a mom. I love school. Nobody will ever love you like your kids love you. It's the last summer before Tucker. Jacob. Or whoever. <laughs> the idea was to create a forum. A community of moms, of women, that have a place to share their stories. <laughs> this is our story. This is us. And it's the story of every woman who is a mom. Welcome hosts and creators of Jen and Barb Mom Life, Jennifer Pate and Barbara Mackin, gamer mom and founder and CEO of Lady in the Blog, Vera Sweeney, and welcome back to the stage, Pete Cashmore. So social gaming. Super fun. Under the umbrella of social gaming, apparently moms have taken it to a whole new level. And Vera here seems to be sort of an expert. So Barb, what, what have you got to ask her? So I'm going to ask, um, why do you think, Vera, that moms love to play social games? I think when you become a parent, your whole life obviously starts revolving around your children. And you sneak in that five or 10 seconds a day um, for yourself. So when my kids are taking a bath or when I'm waiting for them at school, Absolutely. that's the moment when I get a little joy through gaming. And it's quick and it's fast and it's interactive and it's a tidbit. It's just a snippet of something that is fun. And um, it's accessible. You can do it from your phone, from your iPad. I mean, for me, I think like when I'm in the carpool line, I don't have time or when I want to connect with my friends because I don't have time to talk on the phone anymore. I think it's, a, it's an easy snack for me. I think since I've become a mom, everything is about snacking. Whether I'm watching something on the internet or I'm getting my news, I just don't have a lot of time to invest in anything. It's a great way to connect. Now, Pete, as a mom, let me ask you this. <laughs> What games are the moms playing? I mean, what is the biggest trend happening amongst uh, the mom set? Sure, so I think the biggest trend right now is stuff like, like Draw Something, where people are playing these, I mean, it's all about social, right? It's all about feeling that connection. So things like Draw Something, things like Words with Friends, Remain Hot, it's kind of a new wave of mobile games because companies like Zynga, which own these companies, um, they started off on Facebook gaming, right? And that would sit down in front of your computer, play Farmville, play Cityville, those were the biggest. Then Zynga moved across to try and buy all the uh, popular iPhone apps, like Draw Something, because that was the new platform, right? And because mobile changes the way that you play the games. It's not that you have to be at home sitting in front of your computer to play Farmville. Now the trend is towards you know, playing a short five-minute game, like you say, a social game where you can interact with someone, but it's not too much commitment. And with the Zynga games, it's turn-based, right? So uh, you can come back to it a few hours later, and you can continue the game. You don't have to be there all the time. Right, very much so. So how much time do you think that moms are spending each week? How much time do you spend playing? Well, like Pete said, I'm only on for a couple of minutes at a time. Castleville is one of my favorite games ever. And you're, you're there for maybe 10 minutes at a time. So I would say just a few hours a week, maybe three or four hours a week. But other moms can do, you know, five, 10 hours a week, I'm sure. Have you seen people spending a lot of time on? It's probably more than three or four hours. That's like asking me how much time I spend on Twitter. And I'll be like, ah, two <laughs> like hours. five minutes. <laughs> no? Right, right. Um, you always underestimate. Right. But, but oh, sorry. Well, OK, how much, pe how much are people spending on social gaming? Well, social gaming is just a huge industry. I mean, apps right now are a huge industry. Um, companies like Zynga, obviously huge. 
I think what's really key when you talk about how much money is flowing through these, I mean, draw something which you guys have been talking about, it just got acquired by Zynga. It was owned by, well, it's a company called Oh My God Pop. And they were, they were actually struggling a little bit, right? And they were about to run out of money. And they were, um, they launched this game, Draw Something. And it was a huge hit. And they sold the company right away for about $180 million to $200 million just shortly after launching this game. It's a huge industry. Um, these, these games, when they become hits, are just worth so much. And Zynga's really trying to own the whole market. You look at Angry Birds, which is another popular casual game. Um, it's huge. It's got merchandise. It's got a movie coming out. It's got a TV show. You can buy the plush toys. Um, so it's a really, really big industry. Billions of dollars of value. So well, I, well, I actually want to tell a story about how much it can cost. <laughs> so, if you're, you know, any parents out there. So, Barb tells me one day that her daughter, who's nine years old, racked up all of this money on her iPhone with these apps. And no judgment thought, my kid would never do that, right? <laughs> so, two weeks later, spring break comes. My son is getting to play on his iPad more and more. The next thing I know, we check the credit card bill. There's $600 of charges, which, by the way, I have to tell you, iTunes gave us a lecture and credited it back to us. But, you know, it's Wait, And I want to clear my daughter's name. She only had $80, okay? <laughs> Judgment from her, $600. My daughter, she racked up 80 But, but it's so deceiving because the apps are free. Yes, so well, and I think that's the thing. Sometimes these apps are free, and then you have to pay all of this money for, you know, add-ons. I mean, I'm not going to mention certain games. Right, and there's a whole psychology behind this, and companies have been perfecting this over the years and working on, you know, they do a lot of analytics, right? So most of these companies have a huge analytics team that's going through and figuring out how do we make this more addictive, how do we make people spend more? I mean, it's a business after all. So the trick is... You know, this freemium model or this model where the game is free, but you have to buy to progress, maybe. So once you're really invested in the game, you might not want to pay for the game if you don't know what it is. But once you're really invested in the game, then, you know, you might start buying some tokens in the game to get you to the next level. So it's definitely a huge market. Not all games you have to pay, but if you pay, you get further faster. And the entry level is always so low, right? The free is free. And then for 99 cents more, you could not have ads, which if you're playing all week long, definitely is worth a dollar. Right. So right. when you have 100 million people playing or whatever the number is, it, it adds up. But, but it's worth comparing this to other entertainment expenses. Like seeing a movie now, how much would you spend versus playing a $1 game? So, you know, maybe you wouldn't spend $600, obviously, but... You, you might actually be spending, if you think of it in terms of games and people who didn't used to spend on games, then it's an additional expense. If you used to spend on games, well, a console game can be $50, so that's much cheaper to get multiple games on the App Store. And if you're comparing it to seeing a movie or going out for the evening, it is perhaps cheaper to, to buy apps than it is to do other things. Do you think that social games are replacing TV, or I mean, I only have so much time in, in the day, movies, going to the movies. Are you seeing a trend with that at all? I think all media is competitive for attention, right? So even though you might not see apps as competitive directly to movies, if you're, if you're dividing your time differently than you would have done, you're getting a lot of people playing games who didn't used to play games, right? Because right. you had to buy a console, you had to pay $50 per game. That's a pretty big kind of commitment for most people. But now you have people who can pay a dollar and really get addicted to these games. So I think there is going to be a trend towards people having more media types that are more competitive. You can open one of two apps. You could open Netflix or you could open your game. So those are competing for your time, but it's also to do with what mood you're in. Maybe you want to sit down for a couple hours to watch a movie. That's a kind of a different experience than spending a few minutes on a game. Although, well, Vera, you were saying that you play words with friends, the ultimate moms being multitaskers, yeah. you play words with friends in between commercials of watching TV. I mean, I'm, I have every technological thing that I own around me in my living room when I'm doing something. So, but, I, yeah, I, I'm a little scary. But I also think one thing that has replaced in my house is we play less board games. We play games on the iPad now together as a family. We play Monopoly on the iPad, and, and it's like a whole new dimension. So I think one thing that's interesting in my family, and I, I, I wonder if it trends with other families as well, is we're starting to play games together on the iPad. 
I think it's a big problem for the board games industry, right? Because Words with Friends is Scrabble. Uh, uh, sorry, Words with Friends is, Piction, uh, is Scrabble. Draw something is Pictionary. All these games are going to get reinvented for, for the iPad or for the iPhone. And the gaming companies in general aren't there. A lot of them are actual official games, but a lot of them are just taking the basic models of board games, recreating them as a social game in the App Store. So it's kind of bad for the board gaming industry as more and more people are getting involved in these and not spending as much on board games. So it's definitely a trend. It's definitely a problem for those who um, create board games. But it's great for us moms because when you're in the airport and your plane is delayed, it's hard to break out a Monopoly game. Very easy to play on the iPad. I would, li I would like to see Barb and Vera play draw something. Yeah. Good luck with this. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I am the artist of like I'm like a two-year-old. But I okay. try here. All right. So you might have to help me. So this is draw something. This seems to be very popular yeah, I'm amongst oh, moms. I'm tell you. And okay. um, I'm glad I'm not doing it because I'm not an artist. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm so sorry. And I cheat, so I'm going to keep my eyes down. <laughs> oh my God, that's so bad. Wow, Barb. Wow, Barb, what I'm is that? I'm not looking. I'm oh my not God, looking. I don't know what that is. Barb, that's, that's looking okay. a little graphic there, friend. You're, good. You're in the... Shh. <laughs> What's happening? Okay. I think it's erection. Okay. Um. So, okay. <laughs> So now, if you don't know what is happening, other than the fact that Barb cannot draw, she had three choices of words to draw, and then Vera will then have to pick the word. She's never going to get this, by She's the way. Never <laughs> <laughs> okay, so wait, mean. You're sitting next to me, and you don't want to help me. He's, he's just going to laugh at me. Can you see it? I have to just find her name. Okay. She's got to sign in on the game. Oh, here we go. Okay. My kids make fun of my drawing all the time. Okay, so, no. That was the last one. That was the last, that was the last one. That was clearly a pizza. Congratulations, clearly. Vera. Thank you can you. draw pizza. Okay, now let's see what happens. We will now see. Oh my God, what it's so sad. Maybe she will. Maybe she will. <laughs> hmm. A tree, a flower. You be quiet. Something phallic. Sorry. <laughs> um. A cactus. I was going to put a hint, but Pete said it's cheating if you write a hint, and I didn't write that. Is that the end? Yeah. Is this it? Yeah. Is is she goes, is this <laughs> it? Is that all I've got? Sorry. I think the key is oh. this game is to do in private, because clearly this is not a crowd pleaser. <laughs> Swan. Nice. Swan. I told you I cheated. Good job. Did you wow. get that one out without conferring? Telepathically. Uh. I think she's telepathic. I cheated. I told her. I was too embarrassed. <laughs> Um, well, I guess, I guess the point is, is that, you know, it's not, I mean, as the introduction came, it is not just 18 to whatever year old boys who are playing social games. It is moms, too. Um, and I hope that some moms actually invent some games. I don't know. Do you think, who, who's inventing these, men or women? Uh, Zinger and Oh My God Pop are both run by men. Yes. But I think it's, um, they really appreciate that their core demographic is a female casual gamer. It's the biggest growth in gaming because, you know, console gaming has traditionally been dominated by men playing those games. It's way more investment in, in time. And now you're actually seeing quite balanced demographics on these games. But I think more to your point, this is kind of the future of social. This is the future of connecting people. Gaming is not just about you know, the actual act of playing the game and guessing. It's a social interaction. It's going to tie into a lot of our social interactions. It's the new Facebook. It's the new Twitter. It's the new way of interacting. It's the biggest growth market in the App Store, and it's going to be a huge trend going forward. Great. All right. Thank Bye. you. Thank you, everybody. And uh, hope you enjoy your evening. <laughs> enjoy the chicken. Thank you. Thank you.